Hello everyone! Welcome to episode number 4 of Alpha TV! Yay! Episode number 4 na tayo! And tonight, very special yung guest kasi isa sa mga idol ko. Pero ilang beses pa lang kami nagsama eh. Pero basta idol ko to. So ngayon, ang episode natin will discuss about how to start a hardware startup. So yung mga kasama natin dito, I may say, is one of the authority pagdating dito sa topic nito dito sa Philippines. So, maraming tao, hindi pa rin siya masyado kilala kaya nagugulat kami ng asawa ko. Pero tonight, nakakuha tayo ng oras niya. Kaya maserte tayo, guys. So, ngayon, ang mga kasama natin is the CEO and co-founder of SALT or Sustainable Alternative Lighting. And she is also connected to De La Salle pa as an engineering faculty. So, ngayon, tuturuan niya tayo about a hardware startup. So, ang topic natin is how to start a hardware startup with no less than ang isa sa mga favorite kong tao ngayon at hanggang sa mga darating pang araw Engineer Aisa Miheno Hi ma'am! Hey, hey, thank you! Hi everyone! Thank you for having me Sir Felix Always yeah. a pleasure to share uh, experiences and then uh, knowledge din pagdating sa hardware startup because we've been in the business for the past 5 years and I can say and dami ko rin natutunan dito sa journey na to so what I'm going to discuss for tonight is all about how you can start a hardware startup particularly targeting yung mga engineering students natin kasi most of them require a tangible uh, project at the end of their uh, tertiary level so mm. before they graduate as a requirement so tama. yun ang aking topic for tonight tama tama ayan kasi dati sa amin medyo uso na din pero i think yung landscape ng paano siya pwedeng uh, ma-convert into something parang profitable or helpful sa society or sa Sa, sa environment, ganyan. Hindi pa masyado, hindi pa masyado ganun ka, kauso. Hindi pa nausuhan nung araw. Oo. Oo. Kasi yung sa amin, we prototype din, pero parang, okay, dun muna sa laboratory, parang gano'n. <laughs> so ngayon, parang iba na kasi yung, yung, ano eh, yung landscape ng, um, yun nga, ng mga output ng mga bata. Ayan. So kaya meron tayo ngayon. So yung mga nanonood na audience natin, or nakikinig na audience natin, so magandang um, supplementary na learning yung makukuha natin dito when you are on your fourth year kasi K to 12 fourth year an ano fourth probably year. ang thesis yes. no ayan tapos maganda dito sa education system natin na infuse yung entrepreneurship so uh, kaya parang lumaganap na talaga yung ganitong mm. sistema so anyway, to start with, uh, yes, I'm going to uh, be discussing all about how to start a hardware startup. Pero before anything else, bago tayo mag-start uh, ng business or uh, actually diving into starting a business regarding hardware, you have to have the reason behind it. Bakit po pa ito uh, pinupursue? Bakit po ito kailangang i-start or pag, uh, start ng business out of this a particular field kasi what i can say based on my experience for the fa past 5 years uh, it's not a, it's not an easy job it's actually a very challenging uh, job to be over a uh, selling uh, particular um, bus business particularly in the manufacturing field so later on i'll be sharing with you all the challenges and how you can overcome or how we overcome based on our experience yung mga problema na nasa namin when it comes to um, having this journey of um, putting up a product out in the market so yun ang pinaka mahalaga mm -hmm. letting or seeing people use your product finally after years of um, product development mm -hmm. uh, R&D so yun ang aking discuss for today so hardware startup <coughs> All you need to ask yourself before really getting involved in this, because sabi ko nga sa inyo, napakahirap at napaka-challenging itong uh, journey na to, is the reason behind it. Dapat meron kayong matinding, uh, matinding um, reason or why, why, why you need to start this particular, or why you need to get yourself involved in this particular field. So, kaya, uh, based on the slide that I'm showing you, the reason why uh, you are uh, starting a hardware startup and how to 
how to uh, navigate yourself around this question. We actually have several activities that you can do to really understand yourself and find the reason why you wanted to start a business, particularly in this field. Um, it revolves actually around this uh, three uh, Venn diagram, if you if you if you're seeing the slide. So, una mong kailangan itanong sa sarili mo, what are you passionate about? Why passion is really very important because passion will keep you motivated and will keep you inspired uh, to push forward, no matter what the hurdles are in front of you. So, yung passion mo, uh, usually, I what I I advise particularly my students, um, try to understand yourself what, where you are good at and then yun ang inourish mo. Kasi innately, dun ka na magaling. So yun na yung, pag yun na yung ano, if full focus mo na yung effort and then force mo dun sa, sa bagay na yun. Kasi that would uh, eventually, uh, something you're good at, that would become your, your passion. So secondly, purpose. Ano ba yung purpose ng ginagawa mo? How do you find your purpose? Usually, it's kind of hard. Kasi based on my experience, I found my purpose not really inside the school, but actually outside. Actually, after I left a corporate job uh, that I had for about five years and becoming an NGO worker. So later on, I'll be sharing you a backstory so you can understand uh, the main purpose of the product that we're doing. And uh, para ma maintindihan nyo rin siguro, based on this experience, eh, baka makakuha kayo ng points how you can find yours naman, uh, your purpose naman in doing so. And last but not least, the potential of the innovation that you're trying to do. So you have to have this kind of a vision na kailangan 5 to 10 years ang um, iyong um, forecast when it comes to uh, developing a product. Kasi uh, alam niyo naman na ang um, technology is rapidly changing, rapidly advancing. So, pag nahuli kayo ng konti lang, mamaya-maya, hindi na uso yung ginagawa nyo. So, mm -hmm. you have to move fast. And uh, failure will be along the way. Pero sabi nga nila, uh, fail forward. At mas, mag mas mabilis na failure, mas maganda. So you have to, uh, get, you can start all over again and then you can learn from the failures that you have experienced um, in the journey. So purpose, put that as a passion and purpose. So just telling you a backstory of uh, how everything started for us, uh, particularly me, myself, how I was able to get inspired and then develop this kind of product that we have. Uh, it actually started more than a decade ago. So I used to work for a corporate um, as an uh, IT professional. So I was working for this company for the uh, like four years, five years before deciding to actually uh, submit my resignation letter and then decided to try being an NGO worker. So, talagang total pol polar opposite. Uh, just imagine engineering to becoming an NGO worker. Talagang uh, iba, out of my comfort zone. The reason behind that, why I actually decided to um, become an NGO worker is, uh, naisip ko lang na pag, if you're, if you're actually out of your comfort zone, mas marami kang matututunan kasi yun yung mindset ko that time when I decided to, to, to quit my job and become an NGO worker. Because I was a, a, I was a student na parang bahay, skwelahan lang dati. So, and I always believe that uh, there are more things that you can learn, uh, not just in the four corners of your classroom or your office. You'll be able to learn more actually outside when you're again it's it's kind of a cliche uh statement but when you're out of your comfort zone not just with your within yourself but everything around you so that's what happened so this particular slide if you uh, if, if you can see that ito actually your first international volunteer uh experience ko. this is in hanoi vietnam so in actually in uh, Sapa Town, in Laukai Province. So how to get here takes about eight hours by train from Hanoi and then another, another two hours by land. And then we had to traverse. Kailangan namin traverse yung pinakamataas na bundok sa, uh, sa Indochina, which is Mount Pansipan. 
para mag-set up kami ng camp, yung blue uh, house dyan, that's the camp, uh, which is going to be our dwelling for the next three weeks. So, ano yung ginagawa namin dito, may, may village dito na nag install kami ng solar panels since wala rin yung silang kuryente. So, as you can see, yung very foundation ko, uh, start na kagad with having no electricity in a certain community. And then, this particular machine na nakikita nyo sa, uh, sa, sa slide, uh, ito actually yung pinaka nag-motivate sa akin to start uh, the, the not really salt marami pa ako experience before I, I came into that point pero to start studying all about grassroots innovation so ano ba yung grassroots innovation why I call it grassroots innovation because these are innovations that the villagers or the people themselves who are experiencing the problem are the ones who are trying to solve so sila yung nagsasolve ng sarili nilang problema kaya grassroots innovation and this particular machine that you can see from the screen uh, it's actually made out of recycled materials, rudimentary, very basic, pero it's made by the villagers themselves. It creates rice noodles. So, yung rice noodles, alam naman natin, yung mm. po, yan yung parang uh, staple food ng mga Vietnamese. And as you can see, uh, upon uh, immersing in this community, natutunan ko na itong very basic machine actually feeds the entire community of 80 households. Yun yung pinaka-impact nga. Imagine 80 households yung pinapakain. Itong machine na to, nag-iisang machine. And then aside from that, 25% yung naging savings ng community. Bakit 25%? Kasi hindi na nila kailangan pumunta sa nearest town, mamasahe, papunta doon para bumili ng rice noodles. Kaya, kaya na nilang gumawa ng sarili mm. ng rice noodles. And not just that, they gain 50% in income as well. Yun ang pinakamahalaga. Which had a huge impact in the community. Kasi yung uh, extra rice noodles, pwede nilang ibenta sa ah. uh, market. So very, very uh, inspiring <coughs> uh, experience to people. So Sir Felix, if you have any uh, questions, you can uh, ask me in between. So no sure, sure. Pa, uh, pa. So upon returning back to the Philippines, dun ko na na, uh, dun ko na, syempre tutuloy pa rin yung NGO work ko. So I was working for Greenpeace Philippines as a direct dialogue campaigner. What we do mainly is we fundraise. Kasi kaya kami yung pinaka first liner kasi without funds, of course, hindi namin magagawa yung campaigns namin. And at the same time, dun ko na experience yung traveling around the Philippines and immersing in communities. So one particular experience na yun ang pinaka naging inspiration ko when it comes to developing the South Lantern is when we went up in the mountains in the northern part of the Philippines, particularly in Kalinga. So dun ko na laman na people had to travel down the mountain and walk several hours just to buy kerosene lantern. Kasi wala, kerosene for, the, for their lanterns kasi wala silang kuryente. So mm -hmm. they literally live on top of the mountain at ang gasera lang ang uh, kanilang gamit mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to um, doing their night chores. Mm -hmm. So yun yung, uh, yun yung experience ko why I had decided to um, come up with the development of uh, the materials and the technology with our uh, salt lantern. Mm -hmm. So, um, starting with salt lantern, it was kind of difficult, especially when turning it into a business because I don't have any idea about how to run a business. Okay. So, since I am in the technical field, mm -hmm. so wala akong idea sa business. Mm -hmm. So, I was in the technical field and all I know, uh, of course, is how to develop the, the technology. Mm -hmm. So, that's the main reason why ito yung pinaka-advice ko sa inyo, you have to pick a co-founder. Mm -hmm. No matter what uh, business you're getting involved yourself into, it's always it's hard being alone. Mm -hmm. You yes. have to have a co-founder. You have to have someone to, um, is it, of course, two, two heads are better than one. Yes. And you have to have someone to uh, like gauge your decision. Mm -hmm. Para may mag, ano, may mag assert ng decision mo kung may, tama may, ka, may check in balance. Yes, may check in mm -hmm. balance, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And picking your co-founders is very tricky, it's very hard kasi hindi mo alam kung sino ba yung founder or sino ba yung tao na mag-stick sa iyo no matter what. Yes. <laughs> yes. Kaya yeah, that's the main reason why most of the co-founders are actually family members. Family members. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. that uh, mine is my younger brother. Mm -hmm. Which happens to be, swerte ko lang, business major. Mm -hmm. Kaya ako siya naging co-founder. Kasi I don't have any idea about business. I'm in technical. And then he's in business. 
swerte ko lang kaya uh, a very good tandem kami. Mm-hmm. Maraming puzzle piece mm-hmm. na nag ano nag stick na mm-hmm. tumama. <laughs> so, pick your co-founders. Actually, I have several. Okay. Questions about how you can pick your co-founder. So, unang una, what are they passionate about? Kasi dapat, as far as possible, you have the same passion, you have the same interest. Kasi mm-hmm. kung magka-crash kayo lagi, lang, hindi kayo naman pares ng passion, then hindi mag, uh, hindi mag-alas yung, yung, uh, tawag ito, uh, yung partnership ninyo. So, which is, of course, yun ang pinaka-iiwasan natin. And then, what kind of company do, 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 do they want? So, ano ba yung direction? Dapat you have to have the same direction mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to vision. Paras kayo ng vision. Because if you don't have the same vision, then parang, ano rin yun, parang passion din yun. Then uh, wala, mawawala rin kayo in the direction uh, that you're going to along the way. And then last but not the least, what is their cost structure and appetite for financial risk? Ito yung pinaka-importante. Mm-hmm. So, the, the main reason why... Uh, most of the, if you try to check, especially in the Philippine scenario, mm-hmm. most of the successful startups uh, that are uh, actually going out, mainly if you try to understand the background of the founders there, their value, they're, they're, most of them are coming from a wealthy family. Mm-hmm. So, alam naman natin na uh, ang risk ng uh, pag-start ng business, particularly in uh, hardware startup or even software startup. Mm-hmm. Ang, ang advantage with having, uh, of course, uh, um, a very influential family, you have this sort of um, unfair advantage. Mm-hmm. So, meron ka safety net na you can fall on no matter kahit na anong maging uh, failure, meron kang papagsakan. Mm-hmm. Yun ang problema. That's the main reason why konti lang yung lumalabas na talagang from uh, drugs to riches. Most of them mm. are coming from a very prominent family. Mm. Kaya, natutuwa ko sa mga tao na talagang from drugs to riches. Dun, yun ang ina-idolize ko kasi talagang, ano yun, uh, through experiences nila nagawa at na nakamit yung success nila. Mm. Mm. So, kaya yun yung pangatlo kong tanong kasi uh, uh, based on my experience, of course, we don't have that kind of influential family. We don't have an influential family. We don't have a safety net na sinasabi ko na uh, pag nag-fail to, something na may backup kami to fall back on. Yeah, po. Mm-hmm. Uh, the why you have to ask this one. This mm-hmm. very, this, this is the very most, uh, the, the most important question. What is their cost structure and appetite for financial risk? Kasi ito yung magi, ito yung, reason na mag stick sila sa inyo through thick and thin. Mm-hmm. Hanggang saan pa yung financial risk nila. Kasi baka may sarili na silang family, they don't no longer uh, have that appetite for risk. Kasi say, syempre sila yung bumubuhay sa yes. family nila. Mm-hmm. So it's very hard. <laughs> so yan, ito lang yung mga questions na you have to ask uh, yourself and then of course your your, your target uh, co-founder para malaman mo if uh, he's gonna stick or she's gonna stick with you through everything mm-hmm. kasi sa maging success yung business thing niya. Mm-hmm. So finding another a thing of course uh, aside from finding your co-founder or uh, picking up your co-founder the right co-founder is of course finding the right to market. <clears throat> so what do we mean by finding the right to market? So uh, according to a study uh, I'm not sure kung sino naglabas ng study ito but I think it was Harvard um, from the all all of the startups na successful for the past decade, mm-hmm. ang commonality daw ng mga startups nito is that they have a very good timing. Mm-hmm. So, timing. kasi time, timing is everything. Mm-hmm. So, pag mm-hmm. mali yung timing mo, you release your product out in the market too early for people to understand hindi nila tatangkaligid yung product mo. Mm-hmm. If you release it too late naman, baka marami ng technology na mas efficient than yours, mm-hmm. then uh, hindi ka na, of course, ma... Uh, hindi niya relevant yung no, papansin niya. Hindi relevant yung, uh, yung product mo. Mm-hmm. So, finding the right to market that this is very important uh, because of that that reason. So for us, uh, it was, I guess it it was a good timing as well. We, we I can say, because 
uh, during that time when we were starting up, so we we uh, we started this business way back in 2014. Mm-hmm. So. <clears throat> We had uh, product development done for uh, about two years. So uh, 2016, 20, uh, 2015, 2016, that's product development for us and then R&D. And then 2017, kami nag-release first. Pero uh, outside muna na the Philippines because mm-hmm. of our volume capacity. So the, the reason behind that is uh, medyo mababa pa yung volume capacity natin. So alam naman natin sa manufacturing, pag mababa yung volume mm, of, Yes. Uh, Economies of so, scale then po. Yes, that's mm-hmm. the economies of scale. So, mataas pa yung pressure namin and uh, we don't find it reasonable for uh, local setting yung magiging price. Kaya mm-hmm. we decided to release it out, uh, outside. Course, outside of the Philippines first. Which is uh, actually a good decision kasi mm-hmm. nakakaipon na kami ng mm-hmm. Right capital, as you can see, hardware is a very capital intensive. At kaya ito ang pinakamahirap talaga. Mm-hmm. Kasi you have to, uh, of course, um, maintain your cash flow. Dapat tama yung cash flow mo. Later, I'll be explaining where you can get funding. So we have several uh, channels that you can get funding mm-hmm. from. Okay. Hardware uh, manufacturing. So, um, hopefully, uh, ngayon nakakagay na kami ng traction, hopefully we can get, uh, we can hit the right um, amount, the uh, capital that we need so we can release here in the Philippines within within this year. Wow! So, target price kasi namin for the Philippines setting is 800 pesos and we think that's reasonable enough. Na yeah, mm-hmm. sa bagay hindi so, pa pala, so, uh, hindi pa pala nila, hindi pa pala alam ng audience yung mismong, yung product, no? I mean, I see. Uh, oh, 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 oh. So, siguro, so ba tayong, me, ah, sige, isingit natin kasi para at least yung pricing may okay, nila okay, na. Sige. So, let me explain about the product first pala. I, I, I forgot to explain about our product. So, yung product namin actually, what we did, what uh, what we innovated on is uh, actually a material. So, yung material na to, if you submerge it in any saline solution, uh, salt water solution, uh, that would create a, or generate a, some sort of chemical reaction that would mm. generate enough power for mm. you to light up LEDs and even charge low power mobile devices like your smartphones. So meaning to say, uh, salo ka lang ng dagat, lagay mo dun sa compartment ng uh, planter namin, ilaw na siya. And then yung ilaw niya can last ng one salt water solution. Uh, pwede ka rin magtimpla. Kung hindi ka nakatira sa malapit sa dagat, pwede ka magtimpla ng salt water solution mo. Mm-hmm. Just add one tablespoon of salt in a glass of water. And then that would last for four days straight ng ilaw, even without turning it off. Mm-hmm. Tapos after four days straight, kailangan mo lang palitan ng salt water solution. So that's mainly our product. Our uh, target users are usually uh, island communities. So, alam natin island communities na wala pang kuryente sa Pilipinas. Mm. So, alam naman natin ang Philippines has more than 7,000 islands and most of these islands unfortunately still do not have uh, connection uh, mm. to the power grid. Mm. So, yun lang. We're trying to um, address the, the gap, sa mm. lighting gap dito sa Philippines. Hopefully, uh, even outside the market. Kasi mm-hmm. mas marami pa outside the Philippines ang walang kuryente. Mm-hmm. Ayun. So, yun. Uh, speaking of walang kuryente, finding the right to market, it's actually a very good timing for us kasi up until, unfortunately, despite the advancement in science and technology, eto, uh, problema pa rin natin yung kuryente. Mm-hmm. So, actually, half of the population na walang kuryente, not connected to the power grid, ay nasa Asia. Mm-hmm. As you can see from the pie charts, uh, although 24% lang yung sa India, alam naman natin that the population in India is a billion people, so that's mm-hmm. 250 million ng walang kuryente. Mm-hmm. So, 24%, sa atin 30%, so that's around 16 million Filipinos, mm-hmm. uh, around 5,000 to 7,000 uh, families. So, sa North Korea, 73%, Cambodia, 67%, 69% in Myanmar. Mm-hmm. So, these are the people that we are uh, going to help and, uh, of course, our uh, target users. So, how do we do our business? Uh, of course, when it comes to business, you have to, of course, be sustainable as well. So, if you can think of a business model that would sustain mm-hmm. uh, the entire uh of course, the entire uh, market or product market thing. Um, 
currently sa amin, ang business model namin, we partner with NGOs, foundations, and private companies with mm. corporate uh, social responsibility. So, sila yung bumibigyan ng lantern Mm-mm. kasi we do not expect people, particularly yung target users namin, to buy or to afford the lantern. Mm. And then, so, ganun yung aming business uh, model. Hopefully, we can get it out in detail kasi ang laki mm-hmm. din ng market when it comes to detail. Mm-hmm. About yeah, 4, yeah. Billion, 4 billion to 6 billion as an alternative lighting system. Mm-hmm. So, how do we... Uh, how do we do or how do we do the product development and R&D? So, ito naman yung didiscuss ko. Of course, nakahadap ka na ng co-founder mo. May eh, co-founder ka na, pwede na kayo mag-start ng business. Okay. Pangalawa, na, uh, na, na-check nyo na, na, na kapag feasibility study kayo, na-check nyo na your timing is right. Mm-hmm. Market na yon. Ngayon, pasok na tayo sa, of course, product development. Okay, po. So, or... Um, research and development. So, mm-hmm. over the past, sabi ko nga, we started this business, we incorporated way back in 2014, and then two years coming R&D and uh, product development. So, mm-hmm. dun sa two years na yon, of course, we perfected muna the, the technology itself. And even before perfecting the technology, even before <clears throat> releasing more information about our product, usually ito yung ginagawa ng mga companies din na parang their um, they're trying to be as in stealth mode muna before uh, yes. releasing uh, any mm-hmm. information about the product. It's very important kasi kailangan ay uh, secured na muna yung patent ninyo, mm-hmm. uh, lalo na kung patentable yung technology ninyo before even um, getting information out there uh, mm-hmm. na baka kasi ma- 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 ano yung inyong uh, technology, especially if your technology is patentable. So what we did, of course, uh, over the past uh, yung two years na product development, the R&D namin is, of course, uh, this one is for the ano na to, eh, external na to eh. Dun muna sa material. So, of course, uh, R&D kami doon. And then mm-hmm. after our R&D, we applied for a patent. So, sa patent natin, we actually have um, local patent and then we have PCT. So, mm-hmm. ito yung kailangan yung matutunan how you can apply for a patent for your for your technology. So, we have uh, several uh, things that you need to, uh, of course, learn about patenting. patenting. So, first off, uh, meron naman tayong mga programs sa DOST <coughs> na you can tap mm-hmm. na uh, tutulungan ka nila sa drafting. Kasi ito yung pinakamahalaga before you even apply for, for your Patent. patent. You have the prior art search. Mm. And having this prior art search, medyo may kamahalan to if you're not uh, applying for a grant or a- any program mm-hmm. under DOST. But under DOST kasi uh, na-approve nila at uh, alam nila na patentable yung technology, you can, uh, you can uh, have it for free. Mm, okay. Have this done by a private uh, law firm, you know, particularly pang patent law firms. Na din, it, it, uh, minimal cost is 15,000 pesos. 50,000 pesos? 15. Ah, 15,000 pesos. Yes. For, the prior, for, for the prior for the prior art, art search. Pala pala. Oh. Pala ng prior art oh, search okay. before you can even mm-hmm. up, uh, apply for a patent. So, uh, it's it's also very good that you start attending or if, if there are any programs within the community like local uh, like incubate incubators accelerators mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. get yourselves uh, involved in that. Pag mar- pag mayroon mga startup events or competition, salihan nila ng salihan. Mm-hmm. Kasi based on our experience, ganon yun nangyari sa amin. We joined the competition in 2013, particularly the Idea Space Philippines, mm-hmm. and then we got in uh, in their 2014 batch. Mm-hmm. So nanalo kami doon sa kami sa 10 incubate uh, 10 projects na incubate ng Idea Space and we got a lot of benefits from that. Uh, program. So, mm-hmm. unang-una sa lahat, uh, pati yung, inco- yung administrative uh, support, like incorporating your, your, your startup, your business, mm-hmm. even the application for patents, we all, all of those we got for free. Wow. That's one of their support. Mm-hmm. So, it's it's a good thing that you have, you, you, you try to um, check kung ano yung mga local uh, programs sa lugar mm-hmm. ninyo about startups. Okay. If not, you can also check yung mga 
although all of these are actually based in Manila. Eh. So yung mm. mga Ideas Place Philippines, uh, they are holding competition annually. So anong ginagawa nila? They go around the Philippines, check and um, get projects from universities. And then sinasala nila to. And then uh, after uh, a few months, na magustuhan nila yung ma-evaluate nila yung project nyo, magustuhan nila, uh, meron kayong training. Uh, yung screening na yon they will be getting 20 applications. Mm-hmm. And then yung 20 na yon swerte na yon yung 20, kasi makakakuha na yun ng parang training, bootcamp uh, mm-hmm. training. Lahat ko na experience nyo yung design thinking, uh, customer empathy map, everything about the business side uh, mm. uh, and starting uh, a business, you will be uh, getting that from mm. the program. And mm. hindi lang Ideal Space Philippines ang gumagawa nito. Napakadami. So we have uh, accelerators like Kickstart and then we have Brain Sparks mm. here in Batangas. Mm. Brain Sparks is the, um, a, a, I think, brainchild of the uh, founder of Faith. Okay. Uh, Mm. So yun, pwedeng yun rin itap yun. So mm. it's also an incubator accelerator uh, ginagawa nila. Okay. So after, uh, of course, uh, after learning about and getting yourselves involved in this uh, startup events and learning mm. about this program, try nyo lang mag-apply na mag-apply. Papa. So after lo- applying for the local patent, going back to the patent, after applying for the local patent, hindi pa doon nagtatapos yung uh, application sa patent. So you have to have, you have to apply for uh, international patents as well. So mm-hmm. international patents, we have, we, we have what we call PCT. So yung PCT na yun, you can um, choose several countries kung saan sa tingin mo kailangan niprotektahan yung technology mo. Although this is quite expensive, so one um, application for PCT patent, if I can remember, cost us around twenty thousand pesos. Mm-hmm. Application pa lang yun sa international sa WIPO. So if you're familiar with WIPO, first intellectual property, property organization. Hindi pa yun kada bansa. Mm-hmm. So after noon application, pa lang natin yun sa sa WIPO just to submit an intent na kailangan namin protektahan to in these countries. Pag the submit mo yun. It takes about a year and a half or two years or three years, depending on the technology. Mm. They babalik sa yung letter from each of the countries na in include mo dun sa this na yon na gusto mong protektahan. And then each of that countries may, may kanya kanya silang fee. Oh. Uh, so for you, for, for, for US, it's around $2,000 to $3,000. So oh, siya, it's not a cheap, uh, ano, very expensive ang uh, patenting na. So mm-hmm. you have to apply for grants as much as possible. So TAP DOSC, DOSC has a lot of programs for, for that. So we have TAPI, we have PISER. So TAPI, I think dapat kasama yung, if I, if, as far as I could remember, kasama dapat yung DOSC when it comes to developing the product. So hindi pwedeng advance na. So if you're going mm-hmm. to apply for TAPI, dapat right from the very start, kasama na sila sa development. Because mm-hmm. I think uh, they'll be, uh, they'll be a part of the patent. So, uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, kasi mm-hmm. that's how they, uh, that, that's the business model of the OSC of the program itself. Mm-hmm. So, kumukulong sila ng royalties from the projects they help. Mm-hmm. And then, these royalties naman yung return, tutulong din nila dun sa iba. So, it's a, it's a good, uh, it's a good ano, model naman. Mm-hmm. And then, sa PISERD naman, kailangan meron kayong, if not, if it's not a partnership with the university, sa topic kasi kailangan university yung partnership. Sa, mm. sa PISERT naman, I think uh, dapat in partnership tayo with a, with a company, with a private company. And mm. then, as much as, I, I, I guess, 15 million in grant. Pero actually, it's not a grant. It's a loan, pero very, very lenient yung payment terms. Mm. And then, ng interest. Pero, so, after applying for a patent, patent pa lang yung nakaba na discussion. So, after applying for a patent, so local patent, may PCT patent ka na, uh, then you can, of course, uh, go deeper into uh, product development. So product development is very important kasi bago pa makalabas sa market yung product mo, dapat na-testing mo na to and then na-pacheck mo na back to, to the target users that you have. So how do we usually, uh, kasi since we're talking about hardware startup, mm-hmm. uh, usually ang ginagawa namin, of course, we 3D design um, yung lantern and then we mock up, gawa kami ng mock up and then we prototype and then we have 
hopefully we can have the minimum viable product or what we call MVP mm-hmm. before it's starting again before kasi kung, kung perfect na yan you can actually patent that again so getting into that mm-hmm. sa time we have several applications that you can use particularly um CAD so we have SolidWorks AutoCAD and SketchUp so usually yung ginagamit namin SolidWorks kasi SolidWorks has the capacity to check kung ano yung um, stresses or kung ano yung design flaws ng uh, mm-hmm. design. So, after that, as you can see from the screen, ito yung daming pinagdaanan ng lantern. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pero wala ko siya yung final design. So, yung final design namin, we, 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 we still uh, went for the round. Yeah, um, apo. Yun yung nakita ko. Yun yung nakita yes. ko during uh, your talk sa Bulacan. <laughs> Doon tayo nagsa, <laughs> nagsabay. Oo. Oh. Sabi niya pinagdaanan. So, oh. ito ang una, yung mukhang timba. <laughs> so, nag-square like, type kami. Square kasi sabi, uh, sabi ay, ano daw, um, tawag ka mas compact. Pero mm-hmm. we decided to go for the round one. Kasi ito na yung, fami- dito na familiar sa shape ng lantern ng mga tao. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, we, as much as possible, we try to innovate according to people's behavior. Mm-hmm. Kasi, uh, at the end of the day, yung users din naman namin ang masusunod mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to the design. Dapat mas uh, familiar na sila kagad. Okay. Pag nakita nila, alam na nila kung ano yun. Mm. <laughs> Kasi itong iba, parang pag nakita mo, uh, medyo maaalang ka pa nung klaso. Lalo na to, this one. Figure design, out pa nila. <laughs> so, after the, 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 the design, of course, you can have the option of uh, mocking, uh, mocking up, uh, coming up with a mock-up design. So mm-hmm. we have several machines that you can that uh, can do that. You can use CNC or you can use soft tooling uh, when it comes to plastic mold. Kaso may may presyo tong mga to. Kaya sikat ang 3D printers uh, because of uh, this uh, particular uh, activity. Mm-hmm. Uh, sa amin ang ginamit namin actually are uh, 3D printers. This mm-hmm. one so uh, kung mapapansin niyo yung picture nung uh, yung picture na nakikita sa sa website or sa sa Google pag ginugol niyo yung salt lander new square na version all of those parts are 3D printed oh and we're very uh, actually we're very quite uh, um ito grateful for 3D printers kasi kung di dahil sa 3D printer hindi kami makakagawa ng prototype hindi namin mm-hmm. matatesting yung, yung, yung technology namin mm-hmm. and uh, kaya very essential for each and every school or I think if you have uh, kung mag start na kayo ng company ito yung pinakaunang kailangan yung gastusan mm-hmm. actually uh, on our part this is our very first investment mm-hmm. at that we invested kasi and black Ang layo nang narating nung mm. yung, nung ano na yan, nung uh, lantern na ginawa namin from mm. the So we won we won a competition in 2014 just using uh 3D printer as the external package of mm. our lab. Oh, yung pinaka at uh, dito, yung pinaka uh, apo. Uh, oh, yung pinaka an external part, yung pinaka lalagyan technology. Yung pinaka lalagyan. So, mm. 2014, we mm-hmm. competed in uh, South Korea uh, uh, Global Startup Summit. Mm-hmm. So, 50 countries, we were one of the top five. Wow. Just imagine, mm-hmm. just, just because we invested in this 3D printing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Miss Aisa, uh, pwede nyo bang i-share kung parang magkano yung, yung usual na investment for... Investment. So, back... Back then, siguro mas 2014 kasi, so may... Oh, medyo mataas na, mapo, mataas na ngayon. Uh, pero we bought the 3D printer, yung... Hindi itong maker bought, kasi itong maker bought US made, though it's uh, very, quite expensive. Huh? So it's hmm. around, uh, I think, uh, $1,500 yung maker bought. Hmm. So what we bought is yung Flash Forge. So Flash Forge is, uh, parang hindi naman siya clone. Pero uh, I can say it's a clone of MakerBot, but it's Taiwan made. So mm-hmm. it's uh it's pretty much the same it has uh the same functionalities naman. So when it comes to quality, maganda rin naman yung quality ng Flash Forge. So we mm-hmm. bought it around 60 60,000 pesos back then. Mm-hmm. So, 60,000 uh included uh, included na yung dalawang uh, filament na 1 kilo. 
mm-hmm. one kilo filament. Uh, one, one kilo filament kasi would, uh, would cost you around 1,500 pesos. Eh. Mm-hmm. So, dalawang uh, freebie na ng, ano yun, ng filament. Mm-hmm. And then, meron pa rin, ka, oh, meron kaming after sale support at the mm-hmm. same time. We bought it in, um, unfortunately, hindi na siya nag, <laughs> hindi na siya nag, uh, ano, nag-distribute mo yan. Pero we bought it in a, in a company around uh, Makati. Makati. Mm-hmm. $65,000, that was the, the, the initial investment mm-hmm. for the thing. Uh, the same, the same look as this uh, maker mod replicator. Ito, exactly the same, iba lang ang uh, brand. So, mm-hmm. Flash Forge. Uh, Taiwan made. This is US Mm-mm. Mahal din pala siya. Mahal din. Mm-mm. So, kaya niya itsura ng uh, 3D printing farm. Mm-hmm. So, ngayon, meron, I think, meron na tayong 3D printing farm in Tanawan. So, Kaiser... Kizar. Kizar 3D. Kizar uh, Innovations. So, uh, I think they, they have a 3D printer farm, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So, it's a good investment kasi lalo na ngayon uh, pag nag uh, design project ng mga engineering students natin um, tawag ito kailangan nila yan no, no, gumagawa sa mga parts uh, from 3D printers So, that's that's practically the same what in in, uh, in industry uh, manufacturing industry they are uh-huh. also using 3D printers pero yung 3D printers nga lang nila pang industrial syempre mm-hmm. mga malaki Mm-hmm. Pero it's practically it's uh, practically the same. It's pra- the practically the same. Mm-hmm. So, what ginagawa sa industry, manufacturing industry when it comes to product development, Ganun it's also uh, what mm-hmm. we're trying to do. Mm-hmm. So, yun yung ginawa namin. Yun nga lang tabletop nga lang yung aming video people. So, finally, when you have the mock-up, what you need to do, of course, is you have to need, you need to fill this. So, this is very important of all the activities when it comes to prototyping. So, mm-hmm. bakit? Kasi dito ka makakuha ng evaluation at ng feedback. Okay. So, anong kaila, paano, paano, paano mo siya ma-filter? So, of course, you have to talk to people, your target mm-hmm. users. You map out their experience, very important. That's what we do. Paano yung map out their experience nila from from opening the back, uh, the box of your product down to uh, trying to operate the, the, the product. Mm-hmm. Dapat i-jot-jot down nyo yun. Ano yung experience ng customer when trying to open in the box? Kaya even the packaging, even the box, malaking, malaking halaga yun eh. Mm-hmm. Malaking, malaking points yun. Kasi baka pag open ka lang ng box, nahihirapan sila. Hindi na sila. Oh, oh. Doon pala, kung open ng box, dissatisfied na sila. <laughs> so, kailangan doon pala, right from the very start, satisfied mo na yung users. Ang, ang uh, rule lang naman dyan is very simple. Make it simple. Mm-hmm. Dapat with your friendly at madaling, madali ang buhay. <laughs> so yun lang naman ang pinaka parang uh, golden rule when it comes to, of course, the product development. Mm-hmm. So map, map out their experience. Ano yung experience nila from the opening the box, from checking the, the product out, and then from testing the product, operating the product, the full experience. And mm-hmm. of course, focus on the core need. Ano ba talaga yung kailangang uh, problema na you're trying to solve? Mm-hmm. Tapos yung ipa, pictures na lang. Mm-mm. Like for us, ang focus namin is lighting. The Just USB port for charging phones, that's an added feature. Mm-mm. Pero ang focus namin is lighting. So Mm-mm. yun, ito yung mga points lang na kailangan nyo tandaan when it comes to field testing. And then of course, uh, when it comes to field testing, you, you you don't field test in small quantities like for example, 10 lang. Mm-mm. So you have to at least have 50 samples. Okay. We, we did it in 50 samples for field testing. Medyo mahal na lang, may kamakalan talaga. Pero we have, may, to, uh, uh, we have to ano, invest in that. Kasi yun, hmm. din, ang mga, yun din naman ang mag... Uh, da, mag uh, Bibigay ng uh, input. Yes. Yes. dictate kung magiging successful yung product mo. Apo. Okay. Hindi mo na field test yan, right from the very start. Mm-hmm. And then you, you just get it out in the, mar- in the market. And mas, then mahal. Eventually, you know, mas mahal. Mas mahal. Mas mahal. Apo. Ma'am, apo. Ma'am, baka lang meron tayo mga audience na statistician, feeling statistician. Ah, uh, yung bang number na 50 is that a magic number for field test for product? Ah, uh, para uh, hardware, ano hardware. Based on the manufacturing setting, uh, at experience namin, uh, that would be uh, the minimum of course, uh, enough mm-hmm. for you to check if the product would 
have a huge success rate ng product, ah, particularly okay, okay. in terms of functionality. Mm, 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 so, uh, yun yung uh, number, magic number na binigay sa amin, that's the minimum uh, mm, number. Pero you can go as, of course, kung may pera kayo talaga, depend, at, uh, mayama lang yung ano, pwede mas marami. Depende sa, mas marami, sa economy. Mas marami kasi accurate yung inyo, oh. uh, of course, uh, test yung pagkuha ng success rate. So, ah, mas marami sa ang set, much better. Mm, <laughs> so, okay po. Mm-hmm. So, yan, mapunta na tayo. So, finally, when you have evaluated your product and then perfect na yung product, hindi naman, not, not, not really perfect kasi uh, wala naman produkto per- perfect. Pero you have met all of the evaluations, uh, all of the uh, criteria mm-hmm. that you have uh, in your uh, product uh, setting. Pag meron na kayong MVP, tapos mm-hmm. napapatid ko na ulit yun and ready to market na kayo, ito na yung pinakamahirap. Mm-hmm. How to get funding for the manufacturing mass production mm-hmm. of your product. So, we actually have several channels and several venues that you can uh, tap uh, in case of, uh, of course, uh, trying to fundraise for the mass production. Dahil as, as I told you before, napaka-capital intensive nalaga ng hardware. hardware. Uh, kaya if I if if you if you were to ask me if you want to give me that, nangyayong ako anong type of business na you want to start, I wouldn't recommend the first startup. <laughs> I would actually recommend software. Software. <laughs> ang kailangan mo lang yung skills, time, and internet connection, and mm. then the number of people using your of course your 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 software. So, mm. Pero sa hardware, it's a different thing. Kaya kailangan ipa ipaintindi rin natin sa mga uh, venture capitalist natin kasi hindi sila masyado based on my experience ah hindi sila masyadong uh, aware or kasi usually mga software startups kasi mm-hmm. na, na, na we all know konti nga lang kasi yung capital na kailangan uh, mostly ng software startups mm-hmm. so uh, kailangan mat- ma- maintindihan din nila, din nila kung ano yung hirap or mm-hmm. gaga, uh, ano yung capital needed for bakit ganun kalaki yung capital needed for um uh, hardware startups, oh, particularly for the uh, business. Mm-hmm. So, ano ba yung mga several ben- venues or funding options na pwede nating itap when it comes to fundraising, particularly uh, for a startup na capital intensive as hardware. So, we have debt financing, we have equity investment. I'll explain it uh, later on. Isa isa. We have program related investment, we have direct public offerings, we have integral capital, we have crowdfunding, and then we have good scrapping. So when, when you say the debt financing from the term itself debt, so utang. utang. So, pwede kang utang. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, uh, hindi lang naman banko yung pwede mong utang. Uh, pwede kang utang, of course, uh, first off, mga family members, friends. Mm-hmm. So yun. So what we did naman, uh, I guess, uh, mamaya ko na-explain yun sa amin kung ano yung uh, strategy, strategy namin yung comes to this. So debt financing, you can explore this. Of course, uh, we also have bank uh, loans. You can mm. go from the bank. Pero ang problem kasi sa loaning from a bank, particularly if um, your uh, company, dapat meron na kayong revenue. Meron kayong, para, para kasi yun yung collateral. Or if you don't have any revenue, bago lang kayo, you have to have pre-orders. Mm. Yung, mga PO, yung mga POs kasi yun yung magiging collateral mo. So, kung uh, gano'ng kalaki, kalaki yung PO mo, uh, um, 50% of that, yun yung mauutang mo sa mga. Oh, okay. You have to tatapatan mo rin yan ng 50%. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if you're a company, uh, of course, if you're loaning uh, as an individual, yun yung mas mahirap kasi mas uh, komplikado yun. Apo. So, if you're, yun lang tanda nyo, if you're loaning as a company, you have to have uh, purchase orders. Mm-hmm. So, parang, tunayan na, sa magiging successful yung uh, product mo, katunayan na may mga bibili at interesado mo bilhin mo. Mm-hmm. So kahit PO lang. So wala pa talagang kumbaga ay intent of buying the product. So equity investment, ito yung usually na nangyayari. So equity investment involves, of course, of course angel investors, uh, capital uh, or uh, corporate investors, mm-hmm. uh, VCs, venture capitalists, so when we say equity investment, uh, may kukuha silang equity from the company. So mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you're familiar already with equities. 
But if you try, if you're trying to start uh, a company, uh, equity is some sort of I, I can say that's the the shares, of the, shares and ownership oh. uh, of the company mm. itself. So for for uh, of course, try to be very smart if you're trying to incorporate. Uh, dati kasi kailangan five eh, five running corporators. Eh. Diba? So ngayon hmm. ata na ipasa na yung pwedeng isa lang single ano, lang. single corporation. Single corporation. Okay. So uh yung five incorporators na yon uh dati for us we actually had um me my brother at an idea space and then two dummy. Hmm. So dinivide lang namin yung equity equity doon pero uh, since idea space um, rule back then na ah, kasi ngayon I, I think they're a foundation so wala na silang equity in oh. so which is a good thing mm-hmm. they still give the same amount they, they, they still uh, give the same support pero wala nang equity mm-hmm. pero back then um, particularly on, on our batch uh, on our batch and then yung naunang batch sa amin bukuha silang 20% equity mm-hmm. in exchange for 1 million uh, support. So 1 million support, ano yun? 500,000 in cash and then 500,000 in soft support. Mm-hmm. So ano yung mga soft support? Uh, may program kasi ang idea space, six months program na talagang intensive when it comes to business, uh, running a business. Mm-hmm. So meron kaming AIM course, entrepreneurship for mm-hmm. six months. And then we have uh, office space uh, in Makati and then we have for mga provincial uh, startups na napili nila, meron silang housing, and then um, administrative support. So, yung mga patent, mm-hmm. yung pagpalakad ng um, ano mo, uh, set registration mm-hmm. mo, BIR registration mm-hmm. mo, all of that. Um, it's, Covered uh, na nung 500,000 na... Yes, 500 okay. uh, soft, mm-hmm. support. soft support. So, <clears throat> they're getting 20% equity, which mm-hmm. is not bad. Which is, uh, mm-hmm. kasi, um, they're helping out the startups. Mm-hmm. Pero ngayon, uh, mas, mas maganda ngayon kasi uh, they're a Wala na. Wala na. Uh-huh. Binilik nila actually sa amin yung 20%. So oh! We, we, now, okay. uh, we, were, we are now back in uh, ownership of uh, 90% of the company. Mm-hmm. Um, first, um, ginawa namin, first investment namin is actually from a VC. Uh, or I can say angel investor kasi hindi siya masyadong demanding. When, when, well, what's the difference between VC, mm-hmm. venture capitalist, and angel investor? Mm-hmm. It's the aggressiveness of the invest uh, of the investor. So you can say an investor as is an angel investor if it does not really um, expect too much from from your company. Mm-hmm. They're, they're just helping out for you to start. Mm-hmm. Ang venture capitalist naman palitan yan. So ang tatanong yan sa inyo kailan ng ROI. So which is uh, which is uh, quite normal thing. So we had our angel investment, 3%. So we got um, more than enough for us to uh, finish our R&D. This uh, 3% na yun. And then, Doon sa partner namin na manufacturing company, nag-invest din sila with uh, 7%. Yun naman yung uh, product development na up, up until the uh, production na yung mm-hmm. designing of the production. Mm-hmm. So yun lang. Usually, ito talaga yung pinaka-madali. Mm-hmm. Equity investment. Mm-hmm. Kasi lalo na ngayon, ang daming programs, ang daming startup events na you can just pitch. Mm-hmm. Pero actually tayo, programs sa TV, yung final pitch, na you can pitch your idea and then if they like your idea, mm-hmm. parang shark na. Apo, apo. If they, if they like your idea, you can get the money that you need uh, mm-hmm. right there and then. So, mm-hmm. ito yung pinakamadali for me, ah, mm-hmm. uh, equity investment. Kasi madami na tayong channels to do pitching and then getting uh, angel investors and venture capitalists to support your um, mm-hmm. product. So, a program-related investment naman, uh, if you are in a corporate setting, tapos, ako ah, ito, lagi itong ginagawa ng Accenture. So, mm-hmm. uh, Accenture is into program-related investment. Program related. So, ano ba yung program-related investment? Within the company, <clears throat> they run a uh, competition, and then uh, competition na yun, let's say, for, for example, you have... Uh, an idea na magustuhan nila according to the the, uh, the, 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 the theme 
i- mag-i-invest sila doon mm. para makagawa ng bag- panibagong produkto. So usually this is in, in inside uh, parang uh, corporations. Private, private corporation mm-hmm. na. So mm-hmm. program investment. So direct public offering siya to, medyo manirap to. Although it, this is IPO. <laughs> mm. So IPO, yun na yung uh, mag ano ka na, uh, tawag ito, uh, stock, Philippine Stocks Exchange, PSE. Mm. I-ano uh, mo na sa, open mo na sa public. Ibebenta mo na sa public. Yes, so mm. which is actually pinaka madali, pinaka, ay hindi pinaka madali, pinaka um, efficient way of getting funding, getting mm-hmm. uh, getting finance. Kasi public to eh, it's open to everyone who wants to invest in mm-hmm. your company. A problema lang dito for a startup, starting up, yung requirements niya medyo mahirap. So kasi I, I think so if, if I'm not mistaken kailangan may revenue ka na dito na minimum 30 million pesos before you can open your sa public before ka mag IPO. <laughs> so wala. So integrated cap capital uh, usually uh, it's also um, it's also the same as the program li- related investment. Although integrated capital, parang parang pinagsama-sama lang to na capital investment from different sectors. Mm-hmm. So crowdfunding, ito yung pinaka for me pinaka feasible gawin uh, for most of us. Kung nahihirapan ka kumuha ng equity investment, mm-hmm. actually dapat ito unahin mong gawin. Crowd- crowdfunding. So, yung crowd- crowdfunding Alex Predator. Uh, and then last but not least bootstrapping. Ano yung bootstrapping? Magre-rely ka lang talaga on the uh, usually hindi to ginagawa ng hardware unless yung hardware mo ay hindi kailangan ng malaking capital for mass production. Mm-hmm. Kasi for example, if you're not into electronics, na kailangan ng mga uh, complicated uh, raw materials to assemble the product. Kasi for example, you're into uh, fashion startup, fashion industry na uh, kailangan mo lang manpower to do the to the product. So bootstrapping is like uh, you're not getting any investment outside, but instead you're getting uh, the capital that you need from the number of products that you sell. Uh, mm. It's called bootstrapping. It's the same as the software. Yung parang inintay mo lang na mag- mag- magkaroon ka na traction at yung, uh, dumami yung users ng uh, mm. software mo. So mm. yun, bootstrapping. Uh, walang investment na kinukuha outside externally. It's all coming from within sa number of sales na mm-hmm. nagagawa mo for your product. So from the so business itself. Mm-hmm. Going back to crowdfunding. Crowdfunding, this is the, the I, I guess, the number one advice that I can uh, say na you need to do before exploring the rest of the funding options that we have here. Kasi I guess ito yung pinaka-feasible sa atin. Dahil marami naman tayong platforms nowadays thank God sa internet, <laughs> uh, na you can use. Like, una-una dyan yung Kickstarter. If you're familiar mm-hmm. with Kickstarter, then we have another Indiegogo. Ito yung pinaka, two of the largest uh, crowdfunding at pinaka uh, malaki yung foot traffic when it comes to uh, crowdfunding. Ano yung crowdfunding? From the term itself, crowdfunding, uh, you're promoting your product and you're getting pre-orders. Mm. So from the pre-orders, from the number of pre-orders, the amount that you're getting, yun yung gagamitin mo ngayong capital to create the product itself. Pero mm. you have to have several requirements, uh, eh, particularly yung schedule dapat mamimit mo kasi usually ito yung nagiging problema. Laging nadedelay. Mm. Ang isa, uh, hindi na ma-release yung product, uh, yung mga nag-crowdfund, na wala na yung pera nila. So, mm, mm, mm. Uh, yun naman yung risk. So, dapat, um, when trying to crowdfund, try to hit or try to set a capital that's realistic. Mm. So, meron kasi iba na a capital ay sobrang laki, hindi ma-hit. So, medyo mahirap din i-retrieve yun na, na from Kickstarter. Kasi, I, uh, I think there's a, there's a rule na pag hindi mo na-hit yung yung ano yung yung sinet mong fund hindi mo siya makiklaim not sure i i haven't been into a, a crowdfunding crowd uh, although we 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 would want to explore it for for the next version of the lantern um pero maganda sa crowdfunding pag sumobra naman yung capital na kailangan mo mas much better mm-hmm. so there are actually several uh, products 
that was uh, kumbaga naging successful sila dahil sa crowdfunding kasi mm-hmm. it's one way of getting funds and it's another way of promoting mm-hmm. the product I- imagine you're promoting this worldwide and then you're getting funds at the same time so it's it's not a bad uh, move for mm-hmm. you so katulad ng Fitbit if you're familiar with Fitbit din ang unang 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 crowdfunding success mm-hmm. uh, story now we have Fitbit is the new watch device. So, ano yung pros and cons? I wanted to uh, ex- uh, explain this to you kasi ito nga yung talagang pinaka-feasible natin when it comes mm-hmm. to fundraising sa hardware startup. So, why you should? Bakit? Anong, ka- anong advantages ng crowdfunding? Kasi you can get customer feedback. So, from here pa lang makikita mo na yung uh, uh, kung mapibenta ba yung produkto mo. Kung may tao kung mag-re-respond. Kung interested. Kung interested. Yeah. Okay. Dito mo mag-create kung visible ba i-release tong product na to or huwag na lang natin ito. Mm-hmm. Validation. Yun. Tapos demand. How many demand? How do you think? Kasi worldwide to eh. Imagine this. Oh, oh. You get hmm. feedback worldwide. So you can also check the demand. Kung ang um, product ba you're, you're trying to release is uh, kung baga ka, baka konti lang yung uh, demand for this particular product, so baka diba ito diba? Building a community, of course, uh, a way for of promotion, ayun, a way of promotion and then starting a bit to build a community, yung mga followers. Mm-hmm. Uh, we call that, um, limutan ko yung term, pero ito yung mga, ito yung mga unang tao na parang uh, gusto mag-try nung, nung, nung product mo right away, even without Early adapters, answer. parang ganun. Yeah, early adapters, yes, that's the term. So, you're trying to build a community of early adop- adopters. Plus, kung maganda yung product mo, maganda dito, nakabuild ka na ng community, napromote mo na yung product mo, nakabuild ka na ng community of early adopters. Itong early adopters na to, pag nasatisfy mo sila, sila na magkakalat ng... Mag- oh, po, tama. Yes. Parang word of mouth na lang. Yes, that's oh, true. So, kaya lahat ng mga magagandang uh, lumabas, naging successful. Even, I, I think GoPro is also a, a mm-hmm. success story of uh, Kickstarter. I most of them word of mouth talaga kasi maganda yung uh, naging outcome. So why you shouldn't? Kasi pag nilinisin mo yung product mo into public, although kahit na ano na yan, kahit na uh, patented na, na siya, the mm. uh, risk of um, Com- of course competition. Creating yung competition. Competition. Mm. So yun. And then taxes of existing models. So pag may mga uh, pag, pag may mga existing models ka na uh, tawag dito, ito, ito for the uh, advanced na to, kunyari may version 1 ka na, tas may version 2 ka. So, nag-release ka ng version 1 sa crowdfunding, naging successful, tas nag-release ka ng uh, version, version two. 2. Yung version 1 mo, uh, usually hindi na siya papapansin. Mm. So, kung mayroon ka pang stock ng version 1 model mo, parang hindi na siya. Masasayang na siya. Masasayang yun. Kaya, mm. abusin mo muna before you come up oh. with version Negative momentum. Ito yung usually yung nangyayari sa mga failed. So, sa sobrang daming taong nag-respond, sobrang laki ng kapitan, na-pressure usually yung mga co-founders. Mm-hmm. Particularly yung uh, schedule na na imimit nila. Mm-hmm. Lalo na kung yung product mo has... Um, I guess, hindi naman, hindi naman imposible na technology. Pero complicated technology. Mm-hmm. So usually uh yun yung yun yun yung nangyayari. Sobrang sumikat yung product, sobrang tawag dito uh, naging uh tawag dito uh, sumikat nang sumikat yung product tapos yung development mabagal or uh, yun yung negative kaya negative dapat, momentum. Dapat i-release mo yan. Mm-hmm. Release mo yan. Yung talagang final 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 product mm-hmm. na para hindi yung yung, yung uh, time ito, 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 ito yung um, tama dun sa explanation ng timing eh. so mm-hmm. um, dapat okay na yung product mo okay na siya i-mass produce before you even crowd fund kasi para pag na meet mo yung capital or even uh, yung expectation mo beyond that na sobra sobra yung uh, capital na na meet hindi maging ano hindi siya kumbaga hindi siya ma um, na downside to. Kumbaga, mm-hmm. tuloy-tuloy lang yung iyong um, pag-produce nun. Mm-hmm. Usually kasi ito, ano ba eh, hindi, hindi pa siya perfect. 
Kumbaga nag-release lang sila ng video na minimum viable product pero may mga problems pa pala behind mm. that product. Pero ni-release na nila yon sa crowdfund so nagkaroon ng negative momentum. Mm. Mga sa, uh, uh, ano. So marami rin tayong um, failure stories, stories na, na Kickstarter so you can research about that. Hindi lang makatanda ng isa pero we have a, a, a lot of um, failure stories na para matintindihan nyo or you can, you can learn from kung ano yung nangyari sa mga. Mm-hmm. And of course, not, uh, last but not least, kaano to, kadikit to na yung negative momentum, yung manufacturability. So, nag-release ka ng product, minimum viable pl- product, hindi pa pala na na-study na, 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 if it's manufacturable. Ah. So, ito <laughs> ng problem ngayon dahil sa, sa schedule na, hirap pala yung manufacture ito. Y- yun din, negative momentum mm-hmm. din yung ano. So, ayan, manufacturing. So, when it comes to manufacturing, ito na yung pinaka, I, I, I can say, pinaka-challenging uh, mm-hmm. part of the whole thing. Kasi, let's say, for example, na, na-raise mo na yung fund na kailangan mo, mm-hmm. uh, naka-raise ka sa, sa, either sa crowdfunding or sa equity investment, now we go to manufacturing. So, when it comes to manufacturing, I have... Uh, I have drafted several questions that you need to ask before really going into uh, this uh, activity. So, ano yung mga questions na yun? Ito yun. So, medyo, medyo marami. Uh, pero kung uh, kailangan itanong nito sa sarili nyo kasi medyo um, important uh, question siya uh, bago kayo mag uh, tuloy sa manufacturing or sa, product, sa mass production. So, unang una, is your complete functional product spec done. Kailangan dapat kompleto na lahat yung specifications of your product. Kasi pag mm. hindi ka kompleto, madedelay ko yun ang madedelay when it comes to, of course, um, developing your your product. Pangalawa, are your bill of materials and cost of food sold estimates complete? So when you say bill of materials, yung lahat ng uh, materials, raw materials needed to assemble your product, kompleto na ba? Nakakita na ba kayo ng suppliers? And when it comes to suppliers, dapat hindi lang isa ang supplier nyo. Apo. More than one. Kasi paano? Kung yan, nag-grow kayo. nag kayo. 15,000 naman kayo, for example. Tapos hindi pala kaya isupply ni supplier yung 15,000 na yun. Magkakaroon kayo ng problema at delay when it comes to production. So, hmm. dapat two or more suppliers and different different location um masasabi ko it comes to uh, suppliers and then hindi lang dapat is, sa isang supplier nyo lang kukunin lahat ng materials kasi baka manakaw yung technology <laughs> kasi <laughs> kasi isang sa isang lang hindi of course uh, malalaman nila kung ano yung ginagawa nyo have you passed all verification tests and gotten approved for production so uh, all the verification tests meron naman mga uh, operations managers, mga sa production uh, managers na mag-guide sa'yo when it comes to what type of test ang uh, kailangan gawin for a particular product. So sa amin, ang testing namin, si light of course, the luminosity, luminosity. Another, another testing na ginawa sa amin, yung um, drop test. So yun naman usually ang uh, um, uh, ginawa, test. ginawang test sa amin. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes to uh, our product. So, can you optimize the design to use more common components? So, ito, manufacturability, at saka, of course, yung uh, economies of scale din. So, if you can make uh, your product simple enough na makakagamit lang siya ng less resources, much better. Less mm. mas efficient, less cost effective. So, sa amin, yung una namin design, as you can see, ang dami namin pinagdaan ng <laughs> Um, lantern design, di ba? Mm-hmm. Kung una namin design, the plastic part pa lang, around 17 molds. Oh. Ipin mo yung 17 molds na yon, napaliit namin na napaliit, down to 5 molds. Wow! Ano, yung, mm-hmm. If you can optimize that. So, mm-hmm. of course, 17 molds, mas mahal yun dahil isang mold pa lang, 500 to 1 million pesos. So, mm-hmm. Uh, from 17 molds down to 5 molds, so mas, uh, mas mo magiging mas mura. Yes. Have you taken care of tooling, fixtures, design, and verification? So, production, uh, of course, manager uh, ang makaka, ano niya, makaka-guide niya sa makaka-assess. Mm-hmm. When we say tooling, fixtures, design, and verification, yung tooling na yan, yung molding, okay mm-hmm. na ba? 
Then yung jigs and fixtures, depende sa prada kung anong kailangan ng jigs and fixtures mm-hmm. no, para mapabilis yung assembly ng prada. So mm-hmm. yun, uh, yun yung mga pagay na yung kailangan ay ma-check mo kung okay pa. Kasi baka okay yung bill of materials, umaandar. Umaandar din yung, uh, dra- yung mga testing dun sa product, pero yung tooling, mm-hmm. medyo mm-hmm. hindi prepared. Mm-hmm. So what kind of inventory profiles do you need to maintain? So ano ba yung mga inventories na kailangan? Meron naman tayong mga software programs na kailangan. Ay, na pwede uh, gamitin, I think, for this uh, inventory profiles. Although, again, uh, your production uh, operator, your manager will be the one to answer this to you. So are you 100% sure you have the green light from the contract manufacturing partner? So actually, we have several... Uh, yung sa amin kasi ngayon, Subcon eh. Mm-hmm. So, when, when, we, when we say sub, Subcon, uh, sila muna, depende kasi sa agreement ninyo. There are, there are kung naka, na, maganda kung nakakuha kayo ng trout, ng, ng capital na kailangan. So, pwede nyo bayaran na yung uh, manufacturing company right away. Pero what if kulang yung nakuha yung uh, pera from the crowdfunding or from the VC uh, trying to fundraise? Don't worry, kasi meron naman tayong uh, parang pwedeng i-agree with the manufacturing subcontract uh, na sila muna yung gagastos. Just as long as they, they are sure na yung product nyo ay mababenta, may POV kayo. Mm, apo, apo. Pwede sila muna naman, parang consignment. So sila apo. muna yung, yun muna yung gagastos ng lahat, and then after that, sa sales, dun muna sila uh, babayaran. So pagkada mm. pag napenta na ano, may, may, may percentage na. So, Depende yan sa pag-uusap ninyo ng manufacturing company. So, China versus local. Mm. So, my personal preference is to start locally and scale in China later. Sa akin mm. yon. Pero, um, alam naman natin kasi talaga na sa China, napakamura. Bakit mm. mura sa China? Kasi lahat, almost lahat ng raw materials nandun yung mga opuha. Mm. Dahil sa, sa Philippine setting tayo, yung raw, most mostly naman din ng raw materials na particular din namin are coming from China. So yung freight cost pa. Apo, yung, apo. Dumadagdag pa. Dumadagdag yun. Mm-hmm. So you can, you can uh, sa akin naman, kaya ako mag-local kasi we're trying to promote a Filipino product. Kaya I'm apo. sticking with uh, Philippine uh, mm-hmm. manufacturing. Pero mm-hmm. of course, it's up to you uh, if China will be a... Uh, it would be a decision. That's also a good decision because it's more than Everything is already there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, re- we are realistic about your volumes. So your CM does, doesn't drop you when you ha- never hit the 5 million units per year to our target. So usually, sa um, uh, manufacturing company, daw, 5 million a year target. Dapat, yun ang basic. So how, mm-hmm. how, uh, how many units yun per month? Natin. So that's 100, 400, for, that's around 400,000 units, units per month. Per month. So dami naman hindi. Ito talaga yung usually, lalo na pag kunyari, ano na yan, uh, talagang uh, sikat na sikat na yung product no, or kaya staple item na yung product no, like let's say, let's say, let's say for example, uh, dun sa manufacturing company na partner namin, we have, they have or they are assembling a uh, blower. Hair mm, dryer. Hair, hair dryer. So, hair dryer na yun. Mga ganyan karalaki yung mga na, ano nila, na, na, na produce nila 400,000 units per month. Kasi talaga staple item na siya. Kung baga part na siya ng uh, lifestyle ng tao. So kung hindi naman, uh, or you're, you're just starting up, uh, you have to be, be, be realistic with your volume. So dapat meron din kayong forecast na, kunyari, nag, nag, um, come up kayo with a number, 5,000 units per month. Mm-hmm. Are you sure yung 5,000 na yun ay mabibenta mo within a month? Kasi mm-hmm. baka mas-stuck lang na yung mas-stuck yun sa warehouse. Sa warehousing natin may bayad. May bayad din. Mm-hmm. Yes. So regularly test and validate your product at the fa- factory. So of course, alam naman natin lahat na we have to regularly test and validate your product. Sa factory muna, before reg- before uh, validating it to the target. So, target so, sa factory pa lang, ano yun, sira na. So, okay. Um, so, ito yung mga reference ko. So, that's it if you have any questions. Uh, ito yung mga reference ko. Uh, references ko. Napaka um, informative nitong mga books na mm-hmm. So, how to be a hardware startup and then the ultimate guide to bootstrapping a hardware startup. So, all of these are very inform- mm-hmm. informative books. <coughs> like, 
to the last five years of um, building, slowly building our company. So, so yun, sir. Mm. Thank you very much for listening. Ayan. Wow. <laughs> parang, parang ang dami-dami natin na-discuss tonight. Ang dami nating pwedeng i-share sa mga ano natin. So, very timely to kasi I think meron na ulit mga season na ulit in 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 uh, semester or two season na ulit ng pag uh, gagawa ng especially ng mga bata kasi yun nga as mentioned yung technopreneurship naging isa na siya sa mainstream na na subject lalo na ng mga <coughs> college and universities na nagfo-focus talaga sa sa innovation so so some some of the schools here even here dito sa Batangas province so, yung yung De La Salle, yung sa inyo, yung Batangas State University, okay, so okay. yung Faith, opo. Uh, recently launched uh, incubator uh, mm. sa school, sa La Salle, mm. Nexus Innovation Labs. Mm. So yun, uh, yung universities, they've been uh, doing their job, yung their part to to instill technopreneurship sa mga sudyante and then uh, the school then also partners with the government to provide parang innovation labs para ma-support yung mga initiative ng mga bata and then yun nga, yes. mga incubators and accelerators yung mga private mga foundations so talagang uh, we're in the era of I think innovation service product ayan so this is a very good topic that that they can parang get lessons learned from people from like you Miss Aisa na talagang five years no or more than five years kasama yung pag conceptualize nung nung salt. Opo. Sayang ano siguro isasama na lang natin dun sa link yung, yung kung may mabibigay oh, yung video. Oh, I to ano, to include uh, the, the final uh, Apo, apo. Hingi na lang po ako ng link sa inyo para at least makita nila by visiting the link or uh, yung profile dun sa apo, sa website na lang para makita nila paano nagwo-work. Ayan. Ayan. So, um wala tayong question masyado na na-prepare kasi I think wala na masyadong itatanong because it was well said dun sa uh, almost hour natin na discussion. <laughs> oh, no problem. Ma'am, alam kong napaka napakalaki ng puso mo sa pag-share ng mga bagay na alam mo makakatulong sa uh, sa mga susunod sa yapak mo bilang isang <laughs> isang uh, Filipina innovator inventor. So ayan, ma'am, salamat po. Ah, uh, meron ba kayong gustong uh, uh, final na um tip sa kanila sa mga listeners at viewers natin. Uh, when, when, I think um tip ko mainly sa mga estudyante. So how can you uh let's say for example may prototype na kayo tapos na kayo sa uh, prototype niyo tapos na kayo sa final defense niyo sa mga professors and you pass and then gusto niyo ituloy ito as a venture uh for your uh uh for the for the project for the product. I guess ang unahin nyo, paano kayo mag-uumpisa, check nyo yung school nyo kung meron program for uh, this. If not, kung ano yung local community, let's say for example sa Batangas, marami tayong pwedeng itap. Mm. BSU has their own. Mm. Uh, na pwede yung itap, open to public to, hindi lang to, kayo, hindi lang to dapat, hindi lang to uh, for the uh, BSU, students. BSU students. Same with Brain Sparks na under ng faith. Mm. So ito yung mga, uh, ito yung mga dalawang uh, incubator, accelerator na pwede yung lapitan para makakuha ng guidance, support mm. Mm. when it comes to starting or kung paano nyo dadiscapihan para ipisahan ah, yung uh, pension. So mm. yun lang. Mm. Uh, yung yung uh, tip na yun. Mm. So, thank you for having me and wow. thank you for listening. Salamat Miss Aisa. So baka may Mukhang marami mga ngulit sa inyo after ng episode natin pag pinablish natin. So, <laughs> uh, good luck at uh, uh, po, <laughs> good luck at mukhang marami magsisik ng advice ninyo. So, yan, Miss Aisa, maraming... Uh, po, marami. Pero, Miss Aisa, uh, ano yun, yung email ko if they want to contact me. Apo, uh, eh, mukha uh, namang kahit sa Facebook, bigla na mukha namang bigla na. <laughs> Kasi matatag kayo dun sa video. So, ah, okay, apo, maraming maraming okay. salamat po ulit for uh, for gracing this interview, this presentation with us, Alpha TV. Maraming maraming salamat po, Miss Aisa. Thank you, Ren. Thank you for having me and thank you for listening. Ah, bye. Bye-bye po. Bye, ma'am. <laughs>